another episode of the Commander Quest podcast. Today we are going to be teaching you how to analyze a card, specifically multiple cards. So to what I'm saying is I am today I'm going to be teaching you how to analyze cards in that you might want to put in your deck that have you look at the top specific number of cards of your library and then they reveal a specific type or a sp generally it'll be just one but sometimes it will let you reveal any number of them i will teach you how to analyze both of them so i am helping you analyze cards that have you look at the top card a certain number of the top cards of your library and pick out one or more of specific types from those cards to put into your hand figure out what exactly you're likely to get either whether or not you're likely to get um a specific whether or not you're likely to get even one card um or whether or how many cards you're likely to get by whether or not i mean a specific percentage of how much of the time you will get a card all right so I might use multiple um, examples for this, but I'm going to start with Adventurous Impulse. So if you do not know that is green for your library, you may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So the first thing we have to, I'm just basically just a PSA. If you are drawing cards from your deck in the beginning of the game, say we know that we are going to draw seven cards and say we turn this on, play this on turn one. We know that we have drawn eight cards so far. So there are 91 cards in our deck. So you would think in theory that the actual percentage of our deck that would be creatures or lands would change, but you would be wrong. The way that it would work is you would just assume that it would be the ratio that your deck is when it is completely full, because overall, on average, it will be that. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take this, right? So, we're going to have to identify a couple of things. One, which type of cards in our deck it will be able to get. What I want you to do is figure out what cards it will be able to get and count the number of cards in your deck that it will be able to get. So for Adventurous Impulse, we are going to count the number of creatures and or lands. So I'm just going to assume we're running 37 lands and 26 creatures. So overall, that would be 63 cards. So, once we have that 63 number, we're going to look at the number of cards it looks at from the top of your library. So, for Adventurous Impulse, that would be 3. So, we're going to open up a hypergeometric distribution calculator. I will leave a link in the description. Or you, you can just look up hypergeometric distribution calculator. For population size, we are going to put 99 or 98 if you have partners. For the number of successes in population, that's going to be that number that you counted for the cards that it can get. So for Adventurous Impulse, it was 63. For the sample size, that is the number of cards it can look at. So that is 3. And for the number of successes in sample, since Adventurous Impulse can only get 1, that is 1. So what this is going to calculate for us is the likelihood that we will get one or more but if we want to calculate or more i'll show you in a second so with this example we have a 95 percent chance 95.4 percent chance of getting something we will get something it's not even really a question we're going to get something with it the question is whether we'll have choice. And if we bring it up to two, we still have a 70% chance of getting choice. 70 is pretty high. So, yes, 
if you have a similar card to that, then it is pretty likely that you will be able to use it. But let's see. Let's come up with another example. So let's see if we can come up, we can find something that will allow us to choose multiple if they're a specific type. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, great. A uh, collected company isn't exactly what I'm looking for, but it, it's, we'll, we'll start with that. So collected company is three and a green for an instant. Look, look at the top six cards of your library. Put up to two creature cards from with converted mana cost three or less from, from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So again, first, we are going to put in 99 for our population size. Second, for the number of successes in population, that is going to be the number of creatures we have with CMC three or less. So I'm going to say 14, seems about right, maybe a little low. Um, for sample size, that is going to be the number of cards it looks at. So we're gonna put six. And for the number of successes in sample, well, let's start with two. And then we plug that in and boom, we have a 19% chance of getting it. That is not great. The odds of us getting one are significantly higher at 60%. But this just isn't going to cut it. So let's say we have 22. We're playing elves or something. And we're still not looking great. We're at a 40% chance. All right. I could see 30 in elves. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's going to be hard. Yeah. It's only 60% chance with 30. Um, So it's going to be hard to reliably get uh, two off of collected company, but you get the idea. Um, if you have an incredibly high number of cards that will hit that requirement, it might be worth running. I don't know. Well, well, I okay. Um, I don't see any cards that just let me grab as many of a specific type as I want, so I'm just gonna kind of make one up. All right, so population size again is gonna be 99. Number of successes in population, we're gonna say we look at the top five cards and we can get any number of lands. So number of successes in population, we're gonna say 37 is the number of lands we're running. The sample size is going to be five and the number of successes in sample. So how we are going to calculate this is we are going to start with one we're going to calculate the odds of that. Then we are going to multiply 1 by that 90% share. 90%. So we're going to get 0.9. Right? Sorry, not 0 0.09. 0 0.9. Then what we are going to do is we're going to go up to 2. We are going to multiply that answer, 0.62, by 2. So we are going to get 1.24. So we're going to add that to our 0.9. 2.14. If you need to use a calculator, that's fine. I just generally don't. Uh, number of successes in sample. Again, we're going to go up. Three. This is how we are going to calculate the average. Uh, we have 27% chance. Times three is going to be 71. So we're going to add 0.71. So that is going to be 2.85. And we're just going to keep on getting that, doing that until we get to an extremely small number. So we get 0.24 there. So we have 3.09. That is how we are going to calculate the average. And it takes a second, but all right, there we go. That's the end. We get three more percent there. And then if we go up to six, once we go up to six, it just it can't do it anymore. So we have 3.12 as the average number of cards we can get. So that's fairly good. Um, actually, that's, that's very good if that card were real. That card does not exist. Uh, I should have probably found a card like that earlier, but I didn't. So I, I mean, 
you know, it happens. So that's, that's how this works. That is how you can look at, again, remember, if it looks at the top and you can choose one, you put in the number of cards it looks at. You put in the number of cards in your deck it hits. You put 99 as the sample size and you put the, uh, sorry, and you put the number of successes in sample as the number of cards it can hit. There's really not much else to it. There are some slight nuances that I covered earlier, but I mean, this should help you. How effective really is that in the deck? Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time.